have been asking about adapters for Sony E-mount cameras. And if you have non-Sony lenses, particularly good lenses like this Canon L-series 24-105, and you don't want to lose that investment, let's have a look at how they work. B&H sent over the affordable Velo adapter and the high-end Metabones Mark IV BT version. Sony sent over their A to E mount adapter and a couple of A mount primes, the 24mm Zeiss Distagon and the 50mm Zeiss Planar. Behind the adapter I'm using two E mount cameras, the Sony A7 II, a full frame camera, and the Sony A6300 with an APS-C crop sensor. E mount cameras are highly adaptable because they have a short flange back distance. I don't really know what that means but it's fun to say. As a result, you can find adapters for any current or classic lens to E-mount. All of these adapters support full frame and crop bodies and lenses. The Sony adapters made in Japan, Velo and Metabones are made in China. And the basic need is simple. If you have an heirloom lens, all the adapter needs to do is position the lens so that it can focus an image on the sensor. Manual aperture and manual focus are the norm for classic lenses. But if you have a modern lens with auto aperture and auto focus, you expect the adapter to do a little bit more to coordinate those settings with the camera body. The 226 gram Velo includes front and back caps and a tripod adapter. I found the Velo tripod mount to be wobbly and too shallow to make a solid connection. It's not a usable accessory. The adapter can be removed using the knurled ring underneath. There's a small manual in the box. The adapter has electronic contacts on both sides so the camera and lens can communicate. Other than the release lever, the Velo has no external controls or ports. Mirrorless cameras are very susceptible to dust. I recommend that you change lenses and adapters in a quiet and non-dusty environment. Remove the rear cap, mount the adapter using the alignment dots, remove the front cap, and then mount the lens into the adapter. For simplicity, this is a Canon 28mm. The 150 gram Metabones comes in a sturdy travel case, also with back and front caps and a tripod mount. This one works properly. There's no manual, either in the box or downloadable. There are some instructions available online. You'll need a not provided Allen key if you intend to remove the tripod mount. Similar electronic contacts, similar dots for mounting, same process to install the adapter on the camera and then the lens on the adapter. The Metabones has a small discrete button, kind of where your thumb would be, and a micro USB port. I'll get to those in a minute. The 180 gram Sony has an integrated tripod mount. Sony includes a manual. Although the others are transparent, the Sony adapter incorporates a translucent mirror. As a result, it's a little deeper than the others. A tripod mount is clearly handy, and it relieves some of the weight and pressure that might otherwise be applied to the camera's lens mount. But it is awkward and gets in the way, even when you're mounting it on a tripod. Let's take some photos. Velo first with the 28mm. The lenses mount securely on the adapter and the adapter mounts securely on the camera. But until shooting with it, I didn't understand how frustrating an adapter might be, particularly when using autofocus. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've set up a scene to demonstrate the issues I found while shooting in the field and on the streets. It's not exhaustive, but I think it is representative of the experience that you'll have. By default, with APS-C set to auto, the A7 recognizes whether a lens is full frame or crop. In order to get full frame with the Velo, I had to force the APS-C setting to off. When the lens is in the AF position, only single shot AF mode is available. Wide area works, identifying and focusing on the closest object, albeit slowly. Zone chugs to focus, as does center. On objects both near and far. 
and flexible spot near and far. Lock-on flexible spot is not available, but center lock-on, again, slowly. Face detect works erratically. And eye detect mostly works as expected. When I switch to the 24 to 105, the same mode and area settings are available. But it preferred to focus on the background, and only at some focal lengths, even at center, would it consent to focus. A near complete fail, but once in a while, even though I expected the A6300 to be the same, I tried it next. The lighter camera really made me wish the tripod mount worked as expected. I started again with the 28mm lens, since I'd had better luck with that, it crops in as expected. For a surprise, the AF continuous mode is available here. Wide works a little more quickly. And another surprise, zone isn't available, but center is near instantaneous a little slower when the focus has further to adjust. Expandable and lock-on spot are not available, and the lock-on center is not available. Face detect works well, most of the time. Eye autofocus, also a fail. With the 24 to 105, about the same, same mode, same areas. If focus is close, it's fast. If not, lens moves in small steps until it's done. This time, flexible spot can't focus the cat. But is fine with the dog. Nope, not the cat. Face needs encouragement. And eye detection is not available. Before we move on, just a word about manual focus. With the native lens, expanded view appears automatically as soon as you turn the focus ring, but that doesn't work with the Velo. To be fair, fully manual lenses like the 35mm Rokinon Cine lens don't either. And there is a workaround, assign focus magnifier to a custom button, which I'd need for video anyway. Auto exposure does seem to work properly, and here's the thing. The adapter should be completely transparent in both a literal and figurative sense, and in summary, the Velo is erratic and unpredictable, and that was my experience in the field as well. It sometimes just would not autofocus, which is the ultimate frustration. With the thought that you get what you pay for, I'm hoping for more success with the Metabones. Although there's no manual to explain these things, that button enables focus hold, switching between stabilization modes, digital zoom, and other things. And the Metabones has two modes, green and advanced. Green uses less power, advanced offers more features. About that USB port. I found a Metabones firmware upgrade from January 2017, so I installed it. The installer identifies the adapter, provides some options like advanced mode, which enables video autofocus and eye detect with a set of dense and complicated instructions that I'd love to have as a printed reference. There is, however, no LED or other indication to see which mode the adapter is currently in. Standard or green mode supports phase detect, but not IAF. Advanced mode does, so I'm planning to use eye detect to determine which mode I'm in. Eye detection seems to work, so I'm going to switch to green mode which requires holding the little button down while attaching the lens with the camera on. Now neither eye or face detection seems to be working, so I'm switching back. That's a reset accomplished by removing and reattaching the lens. Using the Metabones, full frame doesn't need to be forced in the menu. All focus modes are available, and all the areas switch to continuous for lock-on flexible. Single is fast. 
and responsive for all areas, but wide prefers the background. Usually it focuses on the closest subject. Continuous is less responsive and can get confused with odd buzzing noises, particularly with lock-on. Center lock-on works, but has issues. And as we tested earlier, face detect and eye detect work, but not as well as a native lens, but close. Now the 24 to 105 with the Metabones on the A7. And I felt that this was the combination that provided me the most pleasant and reliable shooting experience. Again, all the modes and areas work, although continuous modes are a little flaky. Granted, it's not as responsive as a native lens, but it's still pretty fast. To use this lens with this camera, the Metabones is a solution that I'm happy with. Now, let's see if that carries over to the A6300 with the 28mm. Sadly, no. Continuous is available, but not auto or direct manual. Zone isn't available, and neither are expand or lock-on flexible. I'm just not making sense of this. And sometimes focus can be fast, sometimes it gets stuck. Face detection works, but eye detection is out of commission. Now, with the 24 to 105, it really is the same. Same features, same performance, although face detect was less cooperative and still no lock-on, still no IAF. For the 24 to 105, the Metabones on the A7 II was the most useful combination, and I was only marginally aware that it wasn't native. But a three-party solution is always likely to be less than a solution that's all Sony. And this is the A7 with the adapter and the 50mm A mount switch on the lens to AF. There's a 15 square pattern on the screen. The modes are all available, even manual, as are the wide, center, and flexible spot areas. Wide uses the 15 spots and sometimes needs a little guidance. Center, a very small spot, works reliably. Flexible spot only allows a choice of the 15 spots using cursor navigation. Switch to continuous for the lock-on modes, but it only works with the 15 spots. Lock-on works. Face detection works. Eye detect not available. Mounting the same combination on the A6300, where crop also seems to enlarge the focus spots. Now, otherwise, the same features are available. The functions work the same. It is odd that zone, as a focus area, is MIA, which indicates to me that the integration is fairly tight. And this lens seems to only support those 15 focus spots. I did try the 28mm. It's the same although its face detection seemed slightly reluctant. Maybe, predictably, the Sony solution, A7, adapter, A-mount 24, provided the most complete experience and the best photos, although, if you can overlook the complications and the speed, or are prepared to shoot manual focus, I was happy with all the photos. If you have one or more lenses that you're particularly fond of, an adapter might be worthwhile. And before the last batch of high-quality E-mount lenses were released, it certainly made more sense. If you're prepared to get on this bus, make sure you try it out in-store or you can return it if you're ordering online. You'll know whether it works for you within an hour or so.